A newly released federal climate report suggests it's extremely likely that rising temperatures are caused by humans. Hundreds of scientists from more than a dozen federal agencies as climate change predictions go, sea level rise is probably the easiest to understand. For at least a decade, we've been shown... Sa loob ng 30 taon, inaasahang magpapatuloy ang pagtaas ng temperatura dahil sa patuloy na carbon emission ng mga industriya. More than 15,000 scientists are sounding an alarm about climate change. They call it a warning to humanity. I think on a certain level, if you want to kind of create the, the perfect risk, it's climate change because it feels distant. And until something actually feels like it connects to your life and what you care about. For months during the rainy season, large parts of Bangladesh are regularly underwater. The large rivers overflow and flood huge areas. Often ferocious cyclones destroy people's homes and farmland their livelihoods, and their lives. 2014 was Earth's hottest year on record, and with 2015 on course to be even hotter, it's clear that our planet is warmer. As the sun's rays reached the Earth's surface, some are absorbed and re-emitted as heat. Greenhouse gases, such as water vapor and carbon dioxide, absorb and re-radiate some of this heat. Increased amounts of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere mean more heat is trapped, warming the Earth. Human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels, have increased concentrations of atmospheric carbon dioxide by 40%, mainly since 1900. Global average surface temperature has increased by 0.8 degrees Celsius over that time. Other changes to the climate in recent decades can be seen in the warming of the oceans, a rise in sea level, decreasing snow and ice cover in the northern hemisphere, and a decline in sea ice in the Arctic. If emissions continue unchecked, then further warming of 2.6 to 4.8 degrees Celsius would be expected by the end of this century. Even at the low end, this would have serious implications for human societies and the natural world. If you think about the scale, it's quite, quite interesting. 30% of all the greenhouse gases that we've ever emitted have been absorbed by the oceans. But they're getting saturated. They just can't absorb as much as they used to absorb. And we think within a matter of decades, they'll stop being able to absorb more. Which doesn't mean the heat will dissipate. It means the oceans won't be able to regulate as much of the atmosphere. And the atmospheric trends will get worse and more pronounced. So what are the countermeasures, if you like, the solutions that should be taken to deal with this? Well, there's a different series that you'd want to deal with both to minimize emissions and then to manage effects. On the emission side, ultimately, it has to be a climate change agreement. We have to move forward with the commitments we made in Paris and the next round of commitments after that and reduce the greenhouse gases that are leading to these changes. Carbon dioxide, which is absorbed by oceans and leads to acidification, isn't going to be stopped by an effort to manage the oceans themselves. You have to manage it at the source. And at the other end, you have to manage the impacts. And the impacts come from damages to coral reefs. They come from movement of fish species. They come from sea level rise. All of those require a host of strategies that are different from those to minimize emissions. Mm -hmm.